And I would like to continue in this vein, same vein, where I would like to quote Acts 20, 35, which says, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And today, we want to acknowledge that we are receiving. And we consider it a blessing from the Ministry of Finance. We love and appreciate gifts. And so, as, as, as anything else, we will be expressing our gratitude and we will be, of course, hearing a little more about, you know, um, the genesis of this particular um, presentation. Today is a momentous occasion and it marks the beginning of what we at MHMC hope will be much needed relief to a situation which has impacted our ability to deliver on the promise of patient-centered care. We are happy to be here this morning, and I would like to welcome our chairperson, Mrs. Joanna Atherton Reynolds, to deliver the welcome remarks. I wish to adopt the established protocol, but notwithstanding, I would like to recognize the presence of our Prime Minister, Honorable Philip J. Pierre, and our Minister of Health, Honorable Moses Jabatis. I want to start by bidding everyone welcome, a very warm welcome to this ceremony. As chairperson of the board, I must register my pleasure at the occasion that has brought us here this morning, an occasion on which the government of St. Lucia is again pledging and demonstrating support not just for the Millennium Heights Medical Complex, but for the people of St. Lucia. About four weeks ago, the board was invited to a cabinet meeting to discuss the question of financing for the Millennium Heights Medical Complex. After the delivery of a passionate and presentation and plea, the Prime Minister, recognizing the seriousness of the issues presented, instructed the Department of Finance to meet with the Millennium Heights Medical Complex personnel to craft a remedial action plan. During these discussions, the expenditure and financial profiles of the complex were validated and a plan was divide, devised for redress. Today, we are witnessing one of the outcomes of these meetings. The government's donation of $5 million demonstrates the belief that every St. Lucian and visitor to our shores has the right to access outstanding healthcare services and to access the highest quality of care. Honorable Prime Minister, on behalf of the board and management, we say thank you for the urgency with which you endeavor to address our current situation. We applaud your efforts and look forward to working with you and your team to ultimately resolving all of the financial needs of the MHMC. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Well said. We now like to invite the Honorable Philip G. Sorry, Moses Jabatis, Minister of Health, Wellness, and Elderly Affairs, to deliver some remarks. Thank you very much. Chair, you called me the Honorable Philip J. P. a while ago. I, the, 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 the heavy, the heavy crown. <laughs> I don't know if I can bear that heavy crown. <laughs> but thank you very much, um, Mrs. Dillis, Acting CEO of the Millennium Heights Medical Complex. I wish to recognize the presence of the Prime Minister, Honorable Philip J. Pierre, and the Member of Parliament for Castries East. Also, I wish to recognize my colleague Minister, Minister Wayne Girard, in the Ministry of Finance, Minister in the Ministry of Finance, and the Parliamentary Representative for Ancillary Can Rees. I also wish to recognize the Chair of the Millennium Heights Medical Complex, Mrs. Atherton Reynolds, and also the rest of the directors. There are other directors here. Um, I wish to recognize the the staff of the Millennium Heights Medical Complex, the medical director, Dr. Charles, and other senior medical professionals and junior medical professionals. 
the Yancy Louis staff, all of the staff of the Millennium Heights Medical Complex who are represented here. Let me also recognize the permanent secretary of the Ministry of Health, Wellness, and Elderly Affairs, Ms. Jenny Daniel, and, and the staff, many members of staff are here. Let me also say I'm pleased to see our Chief Medical Officer, Dr. George, here with us, and uh, Ministry of External Affairs, External Affairs Representative, and also <clears throat> other ministries. Let me say good morning, one, good morning, all. Bonjour tout le monde. Thanks to the staff of the Millennium Heights Medical Complex, and indeed to the, to the staff of all medical facilities in St. Lucia, our wellness centers, our hospitals, for your perseverance over the years. The 26th of March 2020 was indeed a very momentous day, a very important day in the life of the Millennium Heights Medical Complex, in the history of the Millennium Heights Medical Complex. You are asked because of circumstances not of your own making or of anyone's making in this country to hurriedly move from the Victoria Hospital to the Millennium Heights, to this place, the Owen King E. Hospital. You are asked to do so because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Your courage and perseverance, your determination to stay the course, to provide health care to St. Lucians, despite all the challenges, is both admirable and a testimony to your commitment to the people of St. Lucia. During the course of deliberations with the Board of Management, from August 2021, when I was given the portfolio of the Ministry of Health, Wellness, and Elderly Affairs, all of our discussions were aimed at improving the management of the complex and also to improve the situation in the middle of what we knew was a forced transition as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. Many concerns since that time led to a number of actions by the government, an increase by this government in the budget not only to healthcare programs generally, but to the Millennium Heights Medical Complex. Ongoing discussions over the period up to July 18, 2024, to cause further actions to be taken. Actions which included increasing the bed space by way of the refurbishment of a wing at the Victoria Hospital, which would house additional patients not additional, but we, which would house patients with additional beds. Assistance to cure some of the structural issues here at the hospital. Provision of equipment. And in more recent times, a meeting was held by the Prime Minister in the Cabinet Room with the Cabinet of Ministers present on July 18th to discuss immediate action and also to look at a number of key urgent matters which related not only to the Millennium Heights Medical Complex but also to the St. Jude Hospital. <coughs> Present were the chair of the Millennium Heights Medical Complex, the medical director, Dr. Charles, also the chair of the St. Jude Hospital board and also the chief executive officer <coughs> at the St. Jude Hospital. We also had the chief executive officer at the time, the chief executive officer, sorry, Dr. Dexter James with us. Since August 2021, several discussions, as I've said before, have been held, and the plight of the medical professionals and other staff members, both at the St. Jude Hospital and also the Millennium Heights Medical Complex have always been at the forefront. Some of our actions, also included programs, although not at the Millennium Heights Medical Complex, but programs in the general health sector, which would also reduce the pressure on the Millennium Heights Medical Complex. We, we ensured that the programs and processes at the wellness centers were reviewed, created a very new and hopefully very effective over time maintenance unit, created the universal health coverage 
unit at the Ministry of Health, Wellness and Elderly Affairs and started to review the financing of healthcare in a sustainable way. Continued to work on the transition of the Millennium Heights Medical Complex from the Victoria Hospital. Many issues relating to staff, their contracts, and their engagements had to be dealt with even up to last year with the union. I wish to thank, at this stage, I wish to thank Dr. James for his services to the Millennium Heights Medical Complex. Dr. Dr. Dexter James, I wish for us to give him a round of applause for his contributions to the Millennium Heights Medical Complex. I am aware, I am aware that Dr. James will be moving on and I wish him well, I wish him well. I wish also to thank the Board of Directors for their work over the years and I look forward to the development to the continuous development of programs as the board comes to, the, the, the services of the board come to an end in about a month and a half to two months time. And I'm looking for the suggestions and direction as we move forward to reform the Millennium Heights Medical Complex, to reform processes and the conditions at the Owen King E Hospital the Mental Wellness Center and Turning Point, and I look forward to the suggestions as we move forward. I wish to say to you that the financing of healthcare is foremost in our deliberations every time we meet in cabinet. The crux of the matter, as many people say, is the financing. Others will tell you, even though you have the financing and the management, the management style, the management does not match the finances, you still have a problem. But what I want to say to you is that this government is adamant, we are resolute, that even though the road to progress may find potholes occasionally, and even though we find mountains and hills that we must traverse, we will continue to focus on providing better health care for the people of St. Lucia. That is our focus. I wish to thank the Prime Minister and Minister for Finance for his actions to date. When we met on July 18th, when we met on the 18th of July, I wish to repeat the date, when we met in the cabinet room with representatives of the Owen King U Hospital of Millennium Heights Medical Complex and the St. Jude Hospital, on the 18th of July, all of those issues were discussed. The matters were brought forward by the medical director very passionate about the issues here, Dr. James, also the, the, the situation at the St. Jude Hospital, and the Prime Minister committed a number of actions. Those who are in the Cabinet Room will recall, and I see the member for Castries Central, Honorable Richard Frederick, is here, and my colleagues who are here, Cabinet members, will recall that when the team from the Owen King EU Hospital indicated to the Prime Minister what the situation was, and they, they, they gave us the cost. Prime Minister simply said, go ahead. Prime Minister said, what else do you need? And the medical director explained certain things. Prime Minister said, go ahead. When do you want to start? How much money would this cost? Prime Minister said, go ahead. Let's get it resolved. And that was July 18th. There's a reason I'm repeating July 18th. Long before a lot of things. So I wish to say to you that this government is resolute in its, in its commitment to resolving the issues. And if there are urgent issues that have come up, and if the representatives of the medical professionals raise those issues, it doesn't matter where they raise them. The important thing is that those issues are raised. This government is demonstrating that no matter what anybody thinks, if the issues are raised, we are going to stand up and stand forward and deal with the issues as resolutely as we can. So I wish to thank the Prime Minister for coming forward. And he will explain to you that this amount is just a first part of our commitment 
but to say to you that we are resolute in our commitment to resolving the issues. I want to thank the officials of the Ministry of Health, the, P the Permanent Secretary and the other officials who work along with the Millennium Heights Medical Complex management and board to ensure that we get the issues resolved. Today is not the day for history, but there will be a day for history. And the publishing of figures and documents and the results of responsibilities and all of that. There, there's a day that's coming for that. But today is a day for us to step forward and contribute to the resolution of problems. And I say to people all the time when they speak to me about issues in health, and they say, Musa, why, why are you not, so many things being said in the media, why are you not coming and debunk this and say what, who do this and who do that? And I say to them all the time, healthcare is not like building roads. You can go on the street to debate about roads. Some people may not drive cars, and even if they drive in vehicles, they know the vehicle doesn't belong to them, they're not the one buying the shock. So, but healthcare is delicate. And even though there are issues in the public <laughs> domain, and even though I know better in some cases, healthcare is delicate. And whenever the doctors explain certain things to me, certain situations, what people go through sometimes, I keep quiet. Because the issues of healthcare are delicate issues. And there are things I can respond to, but I will not. Our response has to be a response of action. The doctors are complaining about things. As a responsible government, try to fix it. I'm not concerned about all the debate in the media. The nurses are complaining about this and that. Whether these things have been there for a million years, and who didn't do this and who didn't do that, we meet in cabinet. Prime Minister doesn't want to hear about who said this and who said that. What is the problem? What are the doctors saying? What are the nurses saying? What can we do to resolve it? Let's resolve it, Musa. Cabinet, let's resolve it. If the labs don't have enough reagents and whatever, let's not have a big debate about who did this and who didn't do that. Let's get the money and let's try to resolve it. The same for the St. Jude Hospital. And while we are making this donation here, the St. Jude Hospital is also part of this mix and part of this program. And you will hear about the, the actions at the St. Jude Hospital. In addition, to finishing the hospital. Mavle Acid, Simon Padi, and Timo Akoyor. Nous ici aujourd'hui parce que Premier ministre a fait un commitment pour mettre l'argent à dedans l'hôpital Owen King EU et Millennium Heights Medical Complex. Parce que nous savons la, la ni problème qui sert. Nous sommes pas ici pour parler de Paul Vanta avec Niti et Mété, avec les gens, avec les médias, avec qui est-ce qui fait ci, qui est-ce qui ne fait pas ça. Le gouvernement, nous, c'est un gouvernement qui a un commitment. Si la a difficulté à dans ce secteur, exprimer ce secteur de santé, si la a difficulté, nous avons assis dans le cabinet et acheter une manière pour résoudre. 18 juillet, avant la tenir chai de fois parole à les médias, avant tout cela, le Premier ministre a invité officier Millennium Heights Medical Complex, directeur médecin, directeur médical, là, et aussi chair, chair board of directors, et Saint Jude aussi, chief executive officer Saint Jude, avec chairman of board Saint Jude, pour venir dans le cabinet là. Parce que nous savons là ni problème. Et bien pour expliquer le cabinet là, qui est la situation y est. C'est officiel, expliquer le cabinet là, qui est la situation y est. Et bien depuis 18 juillet, depuis 18 juillet, le Premier ministre a fait un commitment pour résoudre cette bagaille immédiatement. C'est officiel sur l'hôpital là dit, il ne veut plus coucher. Le Premier ministre a dit, qui côté ont les couches là, comment c'est fait Ces officiers de l'hôpital ont dit, les affaires qui m'aident là, c'est un problème. Le Premier ministre a dit, combien d'argent ont ils dû Même si Adam, c'est l'argent, ça l'a, ils ont dû longtemps avant nous, à le gouvernement. 
Mais c'est pas nous pas qu'à tirer mettre avec affaires santé. Affaires santé important avec nous radis ces docteurs ces nos là avec toutes ces monnaies qu'on travaille c'est l'hôpital là. Il y a travail web les latins ils covid et il y a qu'à travailler web même si conditions en passé ne sauve. Toutes ces conditions en passé ne sauve ces docteurs ces nos là là qu'à travailler par Jean cette ici. Quoi ça aujourd'hui à mon cas oui merci. Dr. Dexter James, qui me savent, qui est point en l'autre part. Je vous remercie tous ces officiers à l'hôpital là, qui sont là pour travailler dans ces conditions. Et je vous remercie Jean Ministre, le Premier Secrétaire, à Sien moi, tout le monde qui travaille avec Owen King, l'hôpital avec Millennium Heights Medical Complex. Je vous dit que le gouvernement est sérieux dans les affaires de santé. Et s'il a un problème, nous ka allé à dan chimé de la chimé ça la ka ni gotou an didan de la ka ni mon mais gouvernement ça la sérieux à les injin nan nou ni avec premier ministre nous pour mener les affaires santé à devant avec nous ta fait un chai de fond bagay mais jodi a esprit nous ici a pour un des affaires ça yo ka kou en anglais payables bagay l'hôpital la doué pour un chai temps avec gouvernement ka fait des marches pour baisser ces payables ça la pour L'hôpital là, ça prend plus mais l'expiration pour ça aider Jean pays cette ici. Quand ça n'a dit, n'a remercié merci tout le monde avec le ministre santé. Moi fort en la foi moi qui nous comme gouvernement qui résolve le problème ça là. Et difficile avec il y a chaque différent chose et différent bagaille. Mais nous pas ici à pour tirer mettre et nous pas qu'à tirer mettre en les affaires santé là. Nous avons travaillé là, il n'y a pas de problème, nous avons venu avec nous avons résolu le problème. Donc, merci beaucoup, merci le Prime Minister, et j'apprécie tous vous. Nous vraiment really apprécié votre travail, et nous allons faire ça ensemble. Nous pouvons faire ce job fait. Merci beaucoup, Madame Chairperson. First of all, laissez-moi apologize pour être un peu lit. I had several engagements this morning, including the traffic, and I had to give way to an ambulance. I want to recognize my colleagues, the Minister in the Ministry of Finance, and the Minister in the Office of the Prime Minister, responsible for housing. And I want to warn him, call no doctor a hurricane. <laughs> I don't want to cut <laughs> I also want to recognize the chair of the, of the board, members of the board, the CMO, the Minister of Health. And the Minister of Health calls me every morning and tells me that he hasn't slept when he thinks of the issues as they relate to health. So I say to him, I can't help him because I'm not a doctor. I never profess to be a doctor. I have a cousin that's a doctor, I have a second cousin that's a doctor, but me, I never profess to be a doctor. You can ask the CMO. She instructed me to get my COVID vaccine twice or three times CMO. <laughs> three times? She instructed me, I did it immediately. So I listened to doctors. I really want to thank the medical, the medical fraternity in St. Lucia, the doctors, the nurses, everyone. Those who work, the health aides, those who work in the wards, I want to thank them. Because really, your service is a service of love. I know there are greener pastures in other parts of the country, in other parts of the world, sorry. And the very fact that you are here, it's a statement that you, you love St. Lucia and you love the people of St. Lucia. I really want to thank you. And I've thanked you many times before. I've done that several times before in government, in opposition, so it's not a recent thing that I'm saying. I've always thanked the people in the medical fraternity. The same I thank teachers and policemen because of my parents. That's part of my DNA. So I really want to thank you. I want to tell you that we understand the issues of healthcare, and we even understand when you complain. We know you want the best for St. Lucia and the best for your patients. So we understand. So we're not in the business of criticizing you because you complain. Sometimes we believe it could be done differently. 
but you're not in the business of criticizing any doctor. I would be the last person to look for any conflict with any doctor. <laughs> Both for my personal reasons. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> and uh, you know, I'll tell you something. We, have develop, we are developing in this country a very negative attitude. Very negative. And that's bad for the country. The country must be allowed to breathe. We are only seeing the glass half empty. There is constant bombardment, constant negativity. Several people tell me they come to OKU and they get good treatment. People tell me they come to the hospital and they applaud the treatment of the nurses and the doctors. They tell me so. Of course they have issues. There must be issues. There is no medical system without issues. But we've developed a situation of negativity in this country. And many times, it's for personal reasons. For me, I have absolutely no personal reasons to be negative with anybody. My job as a prime minister of this country is to assist within the capabilities of the country and the financial capabilities of the government. So I want to tell you very early that this government will have no problems, will have no arguments, We'll have discussions. We'll have different points of view. And I promise you an open door to get the minister and the members of the board. Let us discuss things. Let us not assume before we talk. Let's talk first. That's the difference between human beings and the other species. We can talk to each other. So let's try not to read anybody's heart or not to read what we think are people's motives. I want to tell you that we understand that there are issues at the hospital and in the health sector generally. Issues in the health sector are not new to St. Lucia. That's not an excuse. That's not an excuse. But factually, issues of health are not new to St. Lucia. Only the night before, I heard Barack Obama speak something about Obamacare. Only, only in, in the great United States, the great United States, there are issues of, in the health sector. So there always be, will be issues. There have always been issues, and there will continue to be issues, because no country can 100% finance the health cares, the health care of their citizens. St. Lucia is no exception. So again, I want to thank you for the conditions that you work under. But I also want to tell you that you're doing some good work in this, under the circumstances. The issue that helps with the health services, to my mind, and let me raise my hand and say I'm not a doctor, seem to be the issues with the emergency health services. People want to get treated immediately when they come to the hospital. And that is complex. First of all, the number of cases that come there were not, the, nobody could, could expect that in such a, a quick space of time, there have been 60 patients, sometimes 70 patients, sometimes 80 patients for, for medical services. And that by itself is due to a number of reasons. I'm not a doctor. Due to a number of reasons why that, that happens. So there is pressure on the emergency services, pressure. We understand that, and the government applauds the people who are working in that sector. So how do we solve it? We had a discussion, and we were told that people are sitting on chairs, etc. so we need more bed space. But we also have a problem that there are borders in the hospital. There are people who come here, and they stay. They're in a hotel. That's a fact. But we don't like to deal with this. We know we just go wrong. And we have to be truthful. In our analysis, we have to be truthful. So when I said to the members of the board and to the doctors that we could expand the space available now, he said to me, Prime Minister, we have borders. What do we do with them? Put them in the streets? What do we do with them? So you have to find space for them. So whereas the intention is to increase the bed space so people can't be sitting on chairs, which looks very bad. The, the, the visuals are bad. 
We want to put them on, in, the, in beds, but we have to take off the borders. The people who are just there. And I want to say to the people of St. Lucia, because no, the responsibility for health care is not the responsibility only of the government. Some time ago, if I can go back a little bit, I spoke about eating the right foods, etc. right? I was ridiculed. He said, I want St. Lucia to eat fig. You know, sometimes I spoke about fitness. I, I, I was said I went into a health, a, a, a diet that caused me to, to, to lose some weight. They said I was sick. So you must understand the messages that, that we send, the hidden messages that we send for, for, for other reasons. So we have people with the high blood pressure, with diabetes, who end up in the emergency ward because they probably not taking their medication, etc. So that's for the pressure. So, to my mind, we have to solve the, the, the issues as far as the emergency services are concerned. So, what did we found, find out? We found out that there are payables due to suppliers for years. I'm not going to tell you how long, how long before. But you know, because the world started on 21st of July, 2021. That's when the world started. So we're not going to we're not going to go, going to be discussing the 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 the, um, the bad the backlog of debt. We're not going to be discussing that because that's our responsibility now. We ask for a statement of payables. Dutifully, the statement of payables showed, and I have it on my phone, send for me, because I don't interfere in these things. I don't interfere, it's not my style. I don't interfere in people's ministries and play, I know everything. I don't, I do not know everything. I will never know everything. So I depend on people to give me information and people to tell me what's wrong or what's right. I was given a list that says there are $16 million worth of payables. $16 million worth of payables for this, for this hospital alone. $16 million. Of course, $16 million did not accrue from the 21st October 2021. July. That's not when it, 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 it accrued. It didn't begin on the 21st of July. It did not. So we're not going to go into how much was there before. We, we, we're not going there. $16 million worth of payables. What does that do to, to, the, to the administration of the hospital? What it does is that it constrains the cash flow of the hospital to deal with its working, its, with its working needs. Because you have to pay for things you do not have. You have to pay for things you got before. You have to pay for medication that you don't have now, but you have to pay for it, you got it before. So it constrains your ability to buy new medication, to buy new medicines, to buy equipment, because you are using your, what's supposed to be your working capital, you use it to pay accounts payable. I hope my accounting, is, my terminology is correct. <laughs> using it to pay accounts payable. Some time ago, I knew a little bit about that. I've forgotten it now. So you are using your working capital to pay accounts payable. So what did, what did we do? We said, for the OKA hospital, we are going to try to settle these payables so when the hospital gets its allocation, which should be more, they can use the allocation to, for their working capital needs. So we said that we will try to pay these outstanding payables. Where did we get the money from? We got the money from the, what is called the excess cash from the CIP. Now these days, the discussion is on the CIP, so we're not going there. Because that's the, that the topic of discussion now. We, we're not going on, on about, we're not talking about that. So we went to the CIP board and we asked them, for $11 million to help us to pay these outstanding payables. The board agreed. That wasn't enough. We needed $5 million more. 
Thankfully, the finances of the country could afford $5 million because of, we have some small surpluses these days. Remember when you speak about surpluses, they tell you why you're not going to buy food for people and things. But the surpluses, we, we happen, the economy could afford some small surpluses. So we took $5 million from the surpluses to put the $11 million, hopefully to clear the $16 million backlog. So you can reduce, you can use your allocation for working capital. That's the first step. So that step came from cash flow, it came from reserves. That's the first step. The second step is to deal with medical expenses generally. And I'm going to make a revelation this afternoon that may surprise you. Sometimes I wonder how the people in the Ministry of Health survive. Do you know? Do you know? That people are owed from COVID days. People are owed for services that they delivered to this country from COVID days and before. We owe the French authorities $2 million for health care. Some of it as old as the year 2001. I have instructed that an audit be done on the payables of the Ministry of Health for two reasons. We want the Ministry of Health to be able to use the allocation to do what they have to do. And secondly, we want to be able to give some sort of relief to the local suppliers of medical services to the hospital. Because there are local people who provide services to the hospital for St. Lucians. Because you may know, healthcare in St. Lucia is more or less free. If not free, more or less free. Because the people who pay their bills are very, very, I mean, it's a small percentage of people who pay their bills. And you can't tell somebody you are giving them service because, in a public hospital because they haven't paid their bills. It's very, 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 very small, the percentage. I don't know the exact figures. 5%. 5%. And I'm told that it, a, a figure to run the hospital would be $100 million per year. That's what I was told. Some ways tell me it's more than that. 104, 105. Right? Now, now we collect 5%, we collect $5 million. So let's go quickly to the health and security levy that you hear about all the time. And the health and security levy is a plaster for all the health services, all health problems in Lucia. The health and security levy came into being in about October last year. And it collected $8 million up to March. $8 million. And the projections for the health and security levy is that for this financial year, it will collect how much million? $33 million. That's the projections, you know. So when you had a young guy, health and security levy, put tax in, overburden of taxes, $33 million is what it'll collect. And I'm told to run OKU alone would be $100 million. So even though we put all the money that's collected in the health and security levy, now forget about security, which is a lot of your problems, because when people get shot, they come to you, they get wounded, putting more pressure on your emergency services. Even though we put all of it, all, and forget about security, we'll need about 70 more million dollars to run OKEU alone. These are the facts. That's the reality. So we can jump and scream and say whatever we want. That is, that's the reality of the situation. So what, did, what are we doing? We are going to use that money to help you pay your payables. You'll be able to use your allocation, and we'll try to increase it. I don't want to make these promises. But we're also going to make a significant intervention in the finances of the Ministry of Health. Significant. I am told, I am told, that the Ministry of Health may owe between 40 and $50 million 
to suppliers. That's the situation, you know. Not okay, you. The Ministry of Health may owe between 40 and 50 million dollars to suppliers. And I can assure you that this government is going to deal with that issue very, very shortly. You'll clap for me. Then. I use the wrong word, doctor. <laughs> we have to laugh, you know. We all make this country as if, let's, you know, I mean, we're too heavy. Let's relax. No, no worry of all the negativity and the thing that's been peddled in the country. St. Lucia is a wonderful country. We have wonderful doctors, wonderful nurses. Huh? So, we're going to deal with that. We're going to deal with that. So, what I want to do is I want to let, allow the Ministry of Health a free hand, and they now must be accountable. They now must be accountable. And I'm going to demand accountability, both from the Ministry of Health and from the OKU. Because what we invest in is taxpayers' money. So we're going to demand accountability. So, very shortly, I'm going to reveal to the country how we're going to hopefully, permanently, hopefully, solve the financial issues that relate to healthcare in St. Lucia. And that's as far as my job is. That's, that's what I can do. I'm the Minister of Finance, all I can do. I can do nothing else. I can't tell doctors what to do. I know about nothing. It's up to you now to work with your board and work with your colleagues to solve the health problems in this country. Under the guidance, the policy directions of the Minister of Health, who is not a doctor either. So that's all. So that's what I'm going to do. We're going to try to solve the financing issues as they relate to health once and hopefully for all. And these issues did not begin on the 21st of July. So, this is just the first, the first step in a revamped financial package for health for this country. As to how we get there is, is up to you. So I took some time to explain to you what we are doing and to once more tell you the government's deep appreciation for what you do. And that history goes for a long time. We had a government that decided to send people to get trained in Cuba. We trained 300 nurses. We were ridiculed for that. Most of them have gone. <clears throat> so you see that history is important. When we sent 300 young people to be, learn to be nurses, the government at the time, Dr. Kenny Anthony, had the foresight that nurses would be necessary. We were ridiculed. Now, I understand most of them have left because nurses are, are, are migrating. We have to decide on a package to try and keep our nurses in St. Lucia, keep our doctors in St. Lucia. So your, your conditions are not perfect. I want to thank you again for working under the, these conditions. You will never hear from me anything, never hear from this Prime Minister, anything that seems like I know anything about medicine or doctors. You never hear from me. I will listen to advice, I will listen to counsel, and I will tell you what I can do as far as the finances are concerned. I want to thank the Minister of Health, because I'm the one who put that, that burden on his back. The Minister of Health was very happy to be minister because, you know, next week is, is Laos. He would have been very happy to go and sing his, his Vive Laos and this thing. That's what he... <laughs> I'm the one who put this burden on his back. You understand? I'm not putting his back. And I'm telling you, I'm very satisfied with the way he's handling it under the circumstances. I'm very satisfied. I want to thank him. I want to thank you. I want to thank everyone. I know it's a labor of love. So let's do it together, and let's start looking at the glass half full instead of half empty. Thank you very much.